On the economic front, things continue to look up in Alberta. For the second time this year, we are upgrading our economic growth projections for 2017. From 2.6% in the budget to 3.1% in the first quarter update to 4% now. A number of independent forecasters have done the same and now show growth of around 4% this year. Those same forecasters project Alberta to lead the country in economic growth next year as well, and we agree. And since mid-2016, Alberta has added over 70,000 full-time jobs, mostly in the private sector. While not every Albertan is feeling it, there's more work to do. Drilling activity is up, retail sales are up, construction is up, and job creation is up too. In fact, nearly every economic indicator that should be up is up. Thanks to the ongoing series of cost constraint measures we put in place, the deficit is down by 200 million. Our projected deficit is now 10.3 billion. We're also making the decision to maintain the $250 million risk adjustment as a cushion against any drop in the price of oil. At the first quarter, we added additional savings targets, doubling that from $200 million to $400 million. Our government continues to do the hard work of identifying savings. Halfway through this fiscal year, we have identified three quarters of those savings, or $300 million, and are on track to meet our targets. We have seen resource revenue from land sales increase as drilling activity picks up. So much so, we are now projecting to beat our budget forecast. And the actual price of oil today is higher than our budget forecast too. This is all good news. It means we have made the right choice. Our choice to lead the recovery rather than follow the recession means we kept building the province rather than neglect our growing population. Rather than give people pink slips, we gave them hammers, lab coats, and laptops. Rather than turn our back on Albertans, we saw an opportunity to invest and to support Albertans through the worst recession in a generation. As a result, it means that the recession is behind us and the budget is stabilizing without the extreme and risky cuts called for by some. It means Alberta's economy is improving without firing thousands of teachers and nurses. It means that panicked and knee-jerk cuts were unnecessary and would have stunted Alberta's recovery and hurt Albertans more. And it means our choice to invest in needed infrastructure like transit and roads and schools is paying off. It increased economic activity and confidence as well as preparing Alberta for the future. So what does our improving economy mean as we begin the task of preparing the 2018 budget in earnest? As the Premier stated recently, it allows us the opportunity to carefully look at expenditures and compassionately reduce spending while protecting those things to which Albertans depend. With the recession behind us, the path to balance is ahead. We said we'd keep spending growth down, and that's what we're doing. I am announcing today the management salary freeze we began in 2016, which was set to expire in March 2018, will be extended through to September 2019. We're also expanding its scope from the core public services to the government's extended agencies, boards, and commissions. Together, these steps will save, the, save more than $100 million over the next three years. It's not enough, however, which is why we're moving from hiring restraint to implementing a hiring freeze. This will let us reduce the size and cost of government through attrition. We're also asking our labor partners to join in our efforts. We are looking for more common sense settlements like those we negotiated with teachers, which provide job stability in return for no raises and better services for our kids. 
We've shown we don't have to risk the recovery underway by embracing reckless cuts. But we do have to take many meaningful steps down the path to balance as our government has said we would and which Albertans expect. That's why I look forward to receiving Albertans' input on our path to balance. I want to hear from them on where they think we can tighten our belts further and where their priorities are in terms of services we should protect. This, all with one Alberta value in mind, quality education and health care should not depend on the price of oil. We cannot choose the price of oil, but we can choose our response to it, and we chose well. The recovery that's underway is helped by the choices we made. Now we have more chase now we have more choices to make, and they will be careful, considered choices about the services Albertans value. About how to return to balance with cuts that are compassionate and investments that will pay off. As we consult about the 2018 budget, I look forward to hearing Albertans' thoughts on how we can make life better while returning responsibly and carefully to balance. Today's update gives yet more proof that there's a bit more spring in our economy's step. There are those who still talk the economy down, who hope for Alberta's failure. But Albertans deserve better. Our government will continue to lead the recovery where some would have followed the recession. Alberta is back in the saddle. I'm pleased to be able to deliver this news and look forward to more positive news in the months to come because that means more Albertans are working more Albertans are setting up shop, and more companies are investing in our great province and choosing to call it home. Alberta remains a great place to live, work, and do business. Thanks a lot, and I'll take your questions. We'll go to the floor. Uh, despite the economic recovery, uh, unemployment still stuck around 8%, uh, only moderating to 76 When When are those looking for work really going to start feeling this recovery? Well, I think, um, as I said, more than 70,000 Albertans are back to work from the low of July 2016. So those, are, th those Albertans are feeling it, obviously, in a positive way for them and their families and the companies they work for. Uh, we're going to see, uh, as the economy continues to strengthen, as the recovery uh, lays in more and across a broader section of the economy, we'll see that uh, unemployment rate come down. You say that you're, gonna, you're instituting a high rate freeze. Wasn't there a hiring freeze before? No, there was a restraint in hiring. What was that? What's the difference there? The difference there is that uh, we were uh, asking that all uh, changes to hiring or increases in hiring go to the deputy minister level. Now we're going to be uh, fashioning a process where every uh, every change in growth in FTEs has to come to Treasury Board for approval or uh, understanding. So we're going to be uh, looking at uh, restricting um, the abilities of people lower down even more, and they have to come up for approval. What does this mean for frontline services in uh, education, health yeah. care? You know, uh, we said and, and we have followed through with our commitment to fully fund education. Uh, so for that area, it means that if there is growth in the number of schools, there will be teachers to teach uh, kids in those places. Uh, what we're looking at is always protecting the front line uh, and uh, finding ways to be more efficient and to rationalize our service delivery so that we keep the front line strong and whole for the necessary supports Albertans rely on. We're we're talking about, just talking about education. What about health care? What about health care? Frontline and healthcare. Yeah, yeah, the same thing applies with healthcare. We uh, want to make sure that uh, the healthcare is there for when Albertans need it, and uh, we will continue to provide supports to both education and healthcare in this regard. Sorry, I don't understand. So we're going to reduce the size of government through attrition now, yeah. which is a, that's quite a change in policy, that's not, because before it's been no, we can't, we can't, we will not sacrifice frontline service while we go through these tough times. But now, if I understand it correctly, a teacher leaves, and that teacher will not be replaced. That's so correct. We, so, in, so now we are. So, so are education and health care, as I said uh, just a second ago, will be those services that we keep whole and strong because we know Albertans value those things. But no, but I mean, you can't, I mean, people leave, and 
you're not going to replace them, but you're still not going to have any effect on frontline services. That's I, that's what I'm saying. We're so not going to have an effect on frontline services. Why did you do that two years ago then? Uh, because we. Uh, you know, we're in a position, we're in a position a couple years ago where Alberta was in a pretty severe recession. We made the choice at that point not to uh, put people on the unemployment lines and add to them, and it was the right choice. And here we are today in recovery, where uh, things are looking up in this province, and uh, it, it, it's indicative that uh, we're at a place where we added to the economy, we made sure people were working. We invested in capital and kept many others working and jobs. Uh, so that was the right decision. And other provinces have taken a more austerity approach and fired people and they're not doing as well in terms of growth that Alberta is doing today. But so then if, if the economy turns south again, then you'll stop the attrition because then that's a bad time to do attrition. It's like you're, uh, I don't understand the philosophy here. The, but the economy is growing and uh, we're- so you're we're jobs while the economy is growing. We're, we're going to keep. We're going to. We're going to keep the basically stable. The uh, the government of Alberta stable, in terms of the people who are working for it, and dedicate our attention to the frontline services that are needed. I guess the cynic would say you avoided the tough, the tough choices two years ago. Then, if you can start losing <coughs> jobs and, and still have the frontline services. Actually, I I think we made some really good choices two years ago, which was to invest in this province. Uh, many were calling for short-sighted cuts uh, that would have been reckless and hurt more Albertans. We chose to invest across the province, and and that is proving to be a good decision today. Minister, what kind of help are you looking for from labor partners? You know, the teachers' agreement was uh, two years of zeros uh, for job stability and uh, investments uh, to help programs or services for kids in those schools. Uh, I think that's the wise way to go, and frankly, uh, I'm hopeful that as we extend our, our negotiations to other labor contracts that we'll find similar kinds of support there. So how do you want to translate what the teachers did to labor uh, collective agreements that are now on the table? Sure. Well, the teachers is two years of zeros, and uh, we've been uh, clear that that's the kind of support we need to make sure that we get a path to balance, get back to balance. Uh, and I think job stability in this kind of climate is something that uh, everybody can appreciate. And uh, um, I'm certainly hopeful that that occurs in the other negotiations we have ongoing. Let's Minister, go to the phones sorry, right one now. Question. One more, Dean. Minister, you're saying the path to balance is ahead. Will be a return to balance Pretty cuts and investments that will pay off. I think you've been saying now, I think we've been for a year now, I think. 2023 is the plan. 2023 is the goal. When That's will correct. we see meat on the bones on how you're going to get us back to balance? Will well, we see it in the budget? Well, our plan... Our plan to balance is uh, to carefully reduce spending while protecting core services. And uh, we're doing just that. Uh, we're on track to find $400 million in savings this year without firing thousands of teachers and nurses. Uh, in addition, we have found $500 million in the two previous years uh, while protecting uh, services Albertans rely on. So our plan to protect and invest is having uh, uh, in this economy is working. Um, we uh, are the fastest growing economy in the province and uh, we will look to uh, continue to tighten our belt going forward. And I'm going to be hearing from Albertans as I go out around the province. Uh, we are also opening up a web uh, line so that Albertans can give us their views around where we can continue to find efficiencies and savings. And uh, as we get towards budget 2018, we will have that path to balance. Do you have numerical benchmarks, though? Like, for example... We've done, a, we've done a lot of work. No, but if you plan to be $2 billion less in deficit than you were the year before and then just keep gradually reducing it, or are you going to... That's, is there going to be one sort of magic balance in 2020? There's no magic in any of this. Although Jason Kenney forward, says yeah. there's 20% 20, 20 he can cut out of the budget, and wave a magic wand and make that happen, I guess. If you look at your savings, even with all the savings you've had, that's less than what? That's like a single-digit percentage of, of the deficit. Well, so, I mean, the end of this fiscal... that we're going to be able to yeah. tighten our belts to the tune of $10 million, is that what you're asking Albertans to, to accept? 
No, uh, what I'm saying is at the end of this fiscal plan, which is before you right now, we're going to be uh, one third less than the current uh, deficit number we have. So we're going to be doing that in a growing economy uh, where we are always watching our spending, but we think, think with a growing economy, we'll be in a better place to see greater revenues on the corporate and the personal side, as well as some of the non-renewable resources. Okay, let's go to the phone operator. Can you put through the first caller, please? Hi, thanks for taking my call. Minister, of the 70,000 jobs that um, have come back, how many of those are new kinds of jobs? Um, I, I think what uh, I hear you asking is, uh, are they... Are they in new new sectors or different sectors than uh, what is what Alberta is made up of? I think uh, many of them are returning jobs. Uh, the ones that were lost are coming back. Uh, so that's in the oil and gas sector. That's in the affiliated uh, trades that support uh, the oil and gas sector, as well as uh, areas like uh, you know housing starts, um, new businesses starting up. Um, those are the, the kinds of jobs we're seeing. Uh, they came back first, probably in the oil and gas sector, because they were lost first. But they're uh, they're going to be diversifying across the economy as diversification takes hold. Thank you, operator. Can you put through the next caller, please? Our next question is from Chris Varco of the Calgary Herald. Your line is open. Hi, Minister. I have two questions. The first one I wanted to ask you about was, with the economy growing faster than expected and oil prices stronger than what you're budgeting right now, they're around $57 a barrel. Do you think you're going to get next year's deficit, which right now is planned for $9.7 billion, below that mark? Can you get below $9.7 billion? And I have a follow-up. Um, you know, I, I'm going to have to uh, defer until budget 2018. I'm certainly glad to see where oil is today. Uh, and as all our Albertans probably and, and businesses, very glad to see where it is today. Uh, but uh, we're going to be looking at all of those things as we go forward. Um, we are, I'm still working on the fiscal plan we have in place, and as we get towards developing budget 2018, we'll have another year out uh, with some revised uh, figures in, in that budget. Um, so, so for the time being, the, you know, the 9.9 .9 billion dollar is uh, where we're targeting uh, the deficit to be in 2018-19. And just to follow up, Minister, um, with the oil prices rebounding, obviously that's driven a lot of the economic uh, recovery here over the last 12 months. And, I, and I'm wondering, are we making any progress, particularly on the government finances, on getting off the oil royalty roller coaster that, that you've talked about? Yeah, diversification is a, a longer-term play, of course. We're seeing some of those... Uh, uh, early indicators uh, being taken up by, for instance, the petrochemical diversification program, which will uh, require the plants to be uh, built in the heartland area, but uh, that will assist us uh, to get off the oil and gas roller coaster by using cheap uh, uh, liquids feedstock from gas. Uh, but we're, you know, there are really good projects too in the Lethbridge area, the biggest uh, private sector project they've ever had in the Cavendish Farms. That uh, happened as a result of Lethbridge, uh, the province of Alberta, and, and that uh, private sector uh, company coming together. Uh, that'll, that'll provide lots of jobs, I, several hundred jobs, and the H, uh, sorry, the Her Amazon. Uh, fulfillment center in the Balzac area once it gets completed is 750 jobs. There's lots of examples of jobs that'll take us off the oil and gas, gas roller coaster and I'm certainly anxious as Albertans are for that to occur so that we're less responsive or uh, at the behest of the uh, drop in world oil prices. We'll take one more from the phone and then come back to the floor. Operator, can you put through the next caller please? Question comes from James Wood, Calgary Herald. Your line is open. Hi, uh, Minister. I, I uh, had a question and a follow-up. Do you, first off, I guess, do you think by implementing this hiring series um, uh, and showing a bit more in terms of these cost reductions that you will avoid a further potential credit downgrade this year? Um, you know, I can't control any of that stuff. What I can tell you is that we're very pleased with uh, where the economy is going. 
Uh, we are uh, looking to do our utmost in terms of restraining spending. Uh, and we're having a positive effect in that regard with over 300 of 400 million in your savings found already in the first six months of this fiscal year. And we'll be able to meet that target for the remaining six months. Um, I, I know that, uh, you know, uh, we, we had a choice to make in terms of the, um, the drop in world oil prices. We chose not to uh, contribute to an either, even deeper recession. And uh, Alberta today is going to grow, you know, the average is about 4% or more uh, in GDP. So it kind of tells me we made the right choice. Um, David Dodge gave us uh, that advice early on when we were a new government, uh, and we followed that. And the second part of the plan was once your, uh, your, your economy is growing again, start to uh, pull back in terms of some of the public sector investments you're making and we're going to be thoughtfully and prudently and compassionately doing that going forward and you'll see that in budget 2018. And can I just clarify two things just to make sure that I understand them. So on the hiring freeze it, that applies only to executive government not to the health and education sectors that's what I'm taking you to be saying and your current uh, long-term target for returning to balance is still 2023 that hasn't yeah on the latter on the latter bit you're you're correct uh, 2023 is when we're targeting and you know I I know mr. Kenny talks about one year earlier in terms of 2022 but that would require it sounds like 20 percent cut from uh, the budget to get there, and that's not thoughtful, that's not compassionate, and they haven't identified where those cuts are going to come from. So just on the 2023-2024 uh, on number, that is still our, our focus and target to balance. Uh, with regard to uh, a hiring freeze, I'm, I'm uh, uh, focused on frontline service delivery uh, being kept strong and whole, uh, because that's what Albertans require uh, when they go to schools and bring their kids there or when they go to hospitals. Hey, let's come back to the room and take some more. Is it actually a freeze or is it when someone leaves that position will be filled? We're just not adding to the service or is, do you expect the public service to be smaller by the time this freeze is over? I expect the public service to be the same size or, or uh, same size so positions going will forward. Be refilled. So positions will be refilled, yes, uh, in terms of the front line that being necessary to be uh, kept strong. So front line positions are filled. That's right. Um, I thought you said in your speech that these jobs wouldn't be filled. Which ones are not going to be filled? When Did I mishear you on your speech? I have to read my speech again, but, I, but the, the, fo the focus is on the front lines, Dean, and where uh, there is attrition, we will make sure that front lines stay strong. Negotiations with, um, what are you doing, nurses, Got teachers already. Who else is looking right. for him? Uh, nurses, HSAA, um, doctors, um, and so from what, AUP. Thank you. So, from what you were saying, you want all of them to accept zero percent for two years. That's uh, stuff that has to go on at the table, but the teachers' uh, negotiation is a really good example of what I hope will be achieved in other negotiations. So, you would personally like to see that? I mean, you've said in your speech earlier that. Teachers, or, or maybe it was an answer to a question I don't remember, but you did say teachers took zero zero. That's Everyone right. Everyone should take zero zero. That's right. That's what uh, my hope is: is that we'll be at the table and the people will see the benefit of long-term job stability uh, and uh, the fact that there don't no raises. They'll have their ongoing jobs, and that's what I hope will occur in negotiations throughout uh, the the other contracts that need to occur. Where are you entering the negotiating process? I'm not, actually. Well, you are. I mean, no, you're I'm saying not. You want them to take two years, 0% increase in exchange for job stability. That's a very clear overture. And, and negotiations will be ongoing uh, with all of the uh, labor contracts at the table. When are these uh, contracts expected to be concluded? Is it within this fiscal year? Uh, within this fiscal? I, there's, there's many tables that are, occur well, that so are negotiating right now. Because that's a pretty big yield. Yeah, don't know exactly when that is to be concluded. I think they're in negotiations now. But are you concerned at all that if you don't get those zero increases, that that will have a negative impact on the last two quarters of this year? Um, no, I think we can achieve the uh, savings, the $100 million we won't still need to achieve this year. Are you suggesting if, there's, if there are wage increases, there would be corresponding job cuts? I'm not suggesting anything. How hopeful 
likely, though, that people are going to happily take nothing for two years? Uh, I think the, the trade-off is good um, in terms of uh, continuing to have uh, great jobs um, and continuing to work for uh, the province or affiliated agencies. Why are you changing your message? I mean, we've never heard this from you before. This is brand new. Um, I think my message is very much like the economy is improving. We're no, doing no, message, better as a the province. Message on the jobs, on the message on the job thing about the yeah. zero increases, and you're, you're, you should should be happy to have a job. Now, that's a good thing. No, I didn't say that. Well, you are suggesting it. Sir. You you said those words. What I'm saying is that uh, yeah, uh, right. continuing to have a, a great job is a good thing and the province of Alberta is a great employer and we're going to continue to uh, make sure that Albertans get the necessary programs and services they require. Okay. So without fair zero enough. percent you're going to cut? No, but, fair, but okay, fair enough, but, but why are you saying this now? Because we see you every three months for the quarterly updates, right. right? And we've never heard you say this before. Whenever we've pushed you on this, you've said, I don't want to negotiate, I'm not at the table, I don't want to negotiate through the media. So what, so you know, I, you I think what now? I'm saying is, by and large, what the Premier has said when she's talked to uh, uh, the, the, the uh, municipalities or the counties, she said, you know, we're going to be looking at compassionate ways to tighten our belts. That's new, too. Yeah. Okay. That's brand new. We've only been hearing that for the last month. So why, why is the message changing? Is it because an election is coming up in a year and a half? No, oh, no, not at all. <laughs> is it is it that soon? <laughs> no, not at all. It's I, I think I think it's it's indicative of uh, the plan that was always uh, put in that was always to, uh, thought to be put in place that was always planned to be put in place uh, with investments into uh, public services with investments to make sure life wasn't made worse for Albertans and we're there now in terms of the economy growing. And so we're now looking at uh, the, the follow through of the plan, which is to uh, thoughtfully and prudently reduce public spending in specific, specific areas that don't hurt Albertans and uh, to follow through with that. Let's go back to the phones operator. Can you put through the next caller, please? Our next question comes from Charles Lefebvre at Chat um, thank you, thank you, Minister. Um, just one of you mentioned earlier that you, your province is getting close to the 300 million of the 400 million dollars uh, in savings and cuts. Where, where does the Alberta government uh, make those cuts? Uh, specifically, where, which, where these uh, these cuts come from? Yeah, we're able to do that without making drastic cuts to services that Albertans rely on, but. You know, it's, it's the hard work of government, and it's the choice we've made. Uh, we think that extreme cuts proposed by Kenny and the UCP would stunt our recovery and hurt f families. Uh, we are uh, finding those, for instance, uh, we found $26.5 million in administrative in efficiencies, reducing supplies and services and vacancy management between nine ministries. We found approximately 50 million in demand adjustments, which means cutting funds that could have been reallocated due to lower demand. We pro reprofiled certain grants to match with project deadlines and to match federal funding timelines. And there are many, many more smaller items that uh, when summed up with the others in your savings add up to 300 million and they're all on the attachment that uh, is part of the uh, second quarter fiscal update and economic statement. Okay, thank you. Operator, can you put through the final caller and then we'll come back to the room for one more. Our next question comes from Carrie Tate of the Globe Mail. Your line is open. Hi, thanks for taking my call. And I have follow-up questions. Um, to start with, it, back to the jobs thing. You talked about how those are just people going back to jobs that already existed. Why um, then do we keep seeing this hype around diversification and those types of projects when we're, you're not seeing it in the actual numbers? Why should we accept that idea that we're getting off the roller coaster of oil and gas? Mm -hmm. Diversification is certainly a longer-term um, uh, issue, but we are seeing, uh, you know, other things come forward that will will be those jobs that take you off the roller coaster. Um, I don't think it's uh, uh, correct to say that we're not seeing that. I think we will be seeing that more and more going forward. And where would be an example where you would where you're seeing it? Sure. Um, the uh, the housing starts are returning, so that's helpful. And then there's allied professionals who are helping that housing recovery. 
Uh, the Amazon uh, Fulfillment Center was is new, and that's going to be 750 jobs. Uh, we're going to be seeing the, uh, the, the chip plant down in the Lethbridge area with hundreds and hundreds of jobs. Uh, so those are all things that uh, take us off the oil and gas roller coaster. And uh, as we see our, um, our capital in investment tax credit and our investor tax credits uh, be taken up and uh, developments happen as a result or, or, or or growth happen as a result of those, we'll see more jobs as a result of those investments, tax credits that we made. Okay, let's come back to the room for one more question, then we'll wrap up. Sorry, Minister, can I circle back on 20, two questions on this. First off, how did we come up with 2023? Why not 2025? Why not 2021? Um, you know, the 2023 number was, uh, uh, if I go back to budget 2016 and 2015, uh, it was, <coughs> under the guidance of uh, people like David Dodge, who said, you know, thoughtfully and prudently uh, bring down your deficit over time. Don't do it all in one go. And uh, when we looked at the amount of uh, increased investment to our capital plan that would be required and the growth of our uh, operations uh, plan, um, that was what we landed on to responsibly uh, tighten our deficit over time, but not to put uh, Albertans into shock around that in terms of reducing public services. Is that a hard uh, deadline then? Like, for example, like I've asked, I've asked you, what is your plan for 2023 bounce? And you said, you know, we'll tighten our belts and we'll let the economy grow. We're planning for the economy to grow. But are there no internal benchmarks? Like, if, if I'm taking a trip to Winnipeg, I'm not just going to drive. I'm going to say, okay, I need to be this point by this point, this point by this point. If I'm going to get there. And yeah, no, those, the you, you have path to balance, if you look at our fiscal plan, it does show a decreasing deficit, and that's the path to balance. And we'll be bringing that out in, for another year beyond the 1920 uh, that we have. Okay, Are you let's... still rolling out a provincial sales tax? Am I still rolling it out? Ruling. Oh, ruling. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for clarifying that. Uh, yes, ruling it out. Okay, let's leave it there. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.